Well, uh, we thought we'd start this particular service with a tour of our facility here at Toronto Centre Place. We're very excited about our building. Uh, we moved in just about two years ago. We're coming up on the second anniversary of our dedication. Um, as you come into the space, you enter into our social room. And so the idea of this was we thought it would be something like um, uh, like a coffee shop where people kind of come and want to gather. Uh, but then we ended up, as you can kind of see, we ended up designing it so that it would be uh, around a central island in a kitchen so that it's more like when you are at a dinner party, it's the kind of way that you can all have conversations together. And that has proved very, very successful. So um, people, you generally speaking, almost all of our activities uh, involve then a discussion period. And we usually do that around snacks uh, here in the uh, social room. Uh, this is also on rollers, so we can take it out of here and uh, change things around. I wanted to show some of the artwork that we have here um, at Toronto Centre Place so that, that we have uh, used to try to um, tell our story and also for identity formation to set this space apart as special to us and our narrative. So when we are coming from the social room into this little hallway, um, it's designed in part after the worshiper's path in uh, the temple and independence. And that begins, of course, by having you go through a threshold of engraved uh, glass that represents the sacred grove and coming into a artwork that represents the burning bush at Sinai. In that same exact way, we have images here of Sinai, of Galilee, and of Palmyra uh, that are representing the old, the new, and the restored covenants. So the idea of Moses before the burning bush, of the disciples uh, being asked to follow Christ, of Joseph Smith uh, asking to have his sins forgiven him. In all of these cases, they're not meant to represent some sort of exclusive uh, grant of authority, but rather uh, the idea that all uh, are called to commune with the divine and everyone, you know, is welcome. This continues as we come this way, and we have two uh, images of the spiral. One of them of a galaxy, so the spiral in macrocosm. The other one of a nautilus shell. And so in that case, uh, living elements, how life uh, is using the same exact symbol. The spiral, of course, is the, the symbol of the temple in independence. And it also, we use it to represent, again, this idea of the worshiper's path. The idea that um, time is not so much just a segment with a beginning and an end, nor is it a circle that continuously repeats itself. But hopefully, uh, as we are moving forward, uh, we are finding that things recur, but hopefully we're ascending and, uh, and learning and continually growing. All of those kind of bring us into the sanctuary. And the sanctuary, of course, includes um, a light wall that is centered on our historic peace seal. Uh, and this, again, has the spiral with the radials. Uh, the radials also include in it the cross, Christianity. And we also wanted to have this, um, because we couldn't have any natural light, we wanted to be able to have, you know, the sort of the feeling of stained glass, the feeling of all the wonderful light we had in our old chapel. And this way we were able to control it a lot more. And the light actually extends around to the front uh, where we have our, our screen, we use the screen a lot in all of our different presentations. But we wanted to have that built in and be a part of the entire um, chapel. Built also into the chapel to remind us over here is our mission. So we have the different um, symbols of Toronto Congregation's mission based on the World Church's mission initiatives. And the rest of the artwork really uh, throughout is meant to represent um, all of our story, uh, you know, from the different components of it. So, for example, starting over here, uh, we have a kind of famous 19th century vernacular painting um, of Isaiah's vision of the peaceable kingdom, the lion and the lamb lying down together, led by the child. This is the, the painting, actually, that inspired the church's historic peace seal. Uh, that the churches used since the 1870s. On this wall, 
Um, we have three images representing the sacred spaces of uh, the restoration and the reorganization of the community of Christ. So the temple in Independence, the auditorium, World World Conference is held, the temple in Kirtland, the original temple. We also have uh, here an image of the exterior of the temple. On this side of the wall over here, we wanted to have um, stories representing the Christian tradition, but we didn't want to have, for example, uh, the kind of paintings that we often see of their 19th century romantic paintings of Jesus that are kind of painting him as a Anglo-Saxon guy in, a, in this sort of way. Instead, we went back, further back into the Christian heritage and took the stained glass windows from Chartres Cathedral in France, so one of the most glorious medieval cathedrals and also with the best preserved windows. And we reproduce the windows that are telling on the one hand the nativity story, and then on the other hand, the story of the passion. And so in both those cases, those central sacred stories of the Christian tradition are here and can be told here. And the other final painting here in the, um, in the uh, chapel is a painting by David Hiram Smith, a copy of a painting. Uh, he was the last son of Joseph and Emma. He became an artist and a poet, ultimately a member of the First Presidency of Community of Christ. Um, and David here has painted a very idyllic scene of Nauvoo, but Nauvoo in ruins. So um, after the failure of Nauvoo, after the assassination of his father, after the scattering of the saints, um, him growing up in this ghost town, but also with the idea of it as um, still kind of this incredible kind of utopic thing. So we like that as another example of our restoration tradition and story. Those continue in our library archives and heritage room. We're a 126 year old congregation. And so as a result of that, we have preserved all sorts of our old records. We have, for example, all of this, the weddings and other sacraments that went back and were performed in the 1890s and things here, and other historic books. We have um, maintained uh, our library and also been adding to it. So for example, all of the, uh, uh, this is a journal dialogue, but we are also trying to have like say, say current stuff. So our, our ma mandate essentially is to preserve um, all Community of Christ related books, especially regarding the history of the church in Canada. And that's included uh, volumes that the congregation um, has published themselves over the course of in the early 20th century and, and, and uh, other times like that. Um, in this section, we have uh, a picture of the previous sanctuaries that uh, house the congregation. So a lot of times when people come into the congregation and they see this very modern building, Toronto Center Place, uh, they find it hard to believe that we're a 126 year old congregation, but we preserved our memory. So we have the images here of the first building on Camden Street, the one on Soho Street, um, our longtime uh, home on Bathurst Street and the, the later renovation of the Bathurst Street building. We also have um, original paintings here by Leslie Olpen Peterson, who is a painter from Utah, who's quite famous for uh, uh, doing very heartfelt images of women who have been forgotten in polygamy uh, and who were brought into it and they were, um, uh, they made the best of their lives, but they also had lots of struggles as a result of that. Um, this, though, these paintings she made for us, for our congregation, they're of Emma Smith and her son Joseph III, who's the second prophet of Community of Christ. Also in our heritage room, I want to show um, the stained glass windows from our Soho Street building. So these were preserved from the building from the 1920s. Um, they are illustrating uh, a scene from the Gospel of Luke, Jesus healing a woman. Uh, but it also represented for the congregation, uh, it commemorated a very important faith healing that occurred at the end of the 19th century here in Toronto. We'll just go ahead and look up. So that brings us back around to uh, the social room again. And the last thing I just wanted to point out is when we end our activities here, 
we also often have all sorts of newcomers and they ask, well, what is this church about? And so one of the things that we did was we created uh, images and icons here for to teach the enduring principles of the church. So grace and generosity, sacredness of creation, continuing revelation, worth of all persons, all are called, responsible choices, pursuit of peace, unity, diver unity and diversity, and blessings of community. Um, versions of these or variants of these have then subsequently been adopted by Community of Christ, the World Church, and they're now um, become official. And we also then have once again uh, built in our mission. So this is always ever before us. Because our idea here in uh, the church is as we are bringing new people in, as they are participating in our events, we want to be sharing our narrative, sharing our identity, and building that with all the new people who are coming to be part of our uh, community.